name we pray. Amen. Almighty Father, we come before you with joy, a joyful assurance that we are serving the living God. We know that you are with us and that our relationship with you is real. We have seen it. We have seen how it goes. We have heard you spoken to us. We have spoken to you. We have heard your reply. We have seen you at work. We have seen things change because of you. Divine Father, we have known that this word is true. The word of God is truth. Therefore, Lord, we are praying. As we are speaking about the authenticity of your word, we are also exerting ourselves on faith in God. I am asking that the spirit of faith will work mightily in us, will strengthen us and make us believing children in the name of Jesus Christ. And by our faith in you, we will accomplish your will for our lives. We will accomplish your will for the world. We bless your name because you answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. In Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Verse 16 and 17. The Bible says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believed, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. And that's why we take that last verse, the just shall live by faith. When someone repents from his sins and believes on the Lord Jesus, he receives the salvation of God and becomes a new creature. The Bible says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away and all things are become new. His new work is characterized by newness. Let's look at me here. Is characterized by all newness. He has he now lives a life of the fear of God. He lives a life of righteousness, a life of obedience to God and His world, and that makes him a just man. Let's look at the book of Genesis. Chapter 6, verse 9. Here the Bible speaks of Noah being a just man. These are the generations or genealogies of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. You can now see Noah was a just man in his generation and he was perfect, just, perfect, and worked with God, just, perfect, worked with God. The just man is the one that works with God, is the one that works with God, doing the will of God, works perfectly with God. 
that is, with the whole of his heart, he yields his whole heart to God. He is serving God wholeheartedly. And does right, lives righteously. A just man is a believer. A believer in Jesus Christ. And the scripture emphatically reveals that the just shall live by faith. The just, the righteous man, the believer in Christ Jesus shall live, shall survive, shall triumph, shall overcome by faith. He shall live, he shall make progress. Yes, he shall prosper by faith. The just shall live by faith. That is the emphasis of the scripture. In Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4. Here the Bible still tells us concerning the just man. It says, Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. The proud man is not upright, is rejected. But the just shall live by his faith. The just shall live by his faith. Emphasis here is given for in the individual faith. Everyone should make sure he has his personal faith in the situations of life. Personal faith in God. Well, of course we trust in one. We trust that God will raise up other people to pray for me. God will raise up other people to intercede for me. But the just must have his own faith. The just shall live by his Faith, it means as a child of God, the Bible is saying, you shall live by your faith. The scripture is, this scripture is both an exhortation and an assured fact. The just are here exhorted to faith in God in order to live. Whatever situation confronts the just man, whatever circumstance arise, or ari ar ar circumstances arise before against the just man, whatever enemy comes against the just man, whatever sickness arise, arises against the just man, Whatever opposition comes before the just man, whatever mountain is one trying to press and squeeze and break the just man, the Bible is saying just man has faith in God in the presence of such great circumstance and you shall live. Have faith in God in the presence of such great opposition and you shall make progress. So, all that is required is believe God. Have faith in God. The Bible says there was a man that came to Jesus Christ because of a problem. Someone was sick at home and he came to Jesus and said, Lord, come home and help me. And Jesus delayed in coming. And uh, it, the message came to that man, don't trouble the master anymore, because that person has died. And Jesus heard what they told him. Jesus said, be not afraid, only believe. That's what Jesus is saying to every child of God. Whatever is the situation, whatever is the confrontation, be not afraid, only believe. If you believe God, you will see the glory of God. You are going to live. You are going to survive. You are going to triumph. Let a just man inside, fall inside water and you don't see him anymore. And he believes in God right inside water. He shall suffer again. 
That's what the Bible says. That's an exhortation to the just. It's an exhortation to you, woman. Believe and you shall live. You shall survive. You shall progress. Again, it is, as I say, it is also assuring the just that if they continue in being just and righteous, they shall triumph in life and live. That's it. It's an absolute fact. Who are the overcomers of life? They that believe in God. They are the overcomer. It tells us this. There is warfare between two opposing forces. The one force is just. And before even the warfare is completed, the result was announced. And what was the result? The result was that they just won it after all. That's what he's saying. Whatever is the confrontation between you and the devil, whatever is the confrontation between you and any man, and any neighbor, and any institution, and any organization, the Bible says if you continue in being just, you are the winner in that confrontation. That's scripture. If you continue in being just, then what do you do to win in life? What do you do to overcome in life? What do you do to triumph in life? It's just to keep yourself righteous. Keep yourself just. Keep yourself blameless. Then you shall live. The scripture. The scripture cannot be broken. The scripture is backed up with several testimonies, a cloud of many witnesses. I talk to you, number one, I'm going to talk to you on explaining the fate of the just. We say the just shall live, and that he shall live by faith. What is this faith? I've said severally that faith is complete confidence in God. Complete confidence in God's word. Complete assurance, complete reliance on God's promises. Walking and living by the instruction of God. The just shall live by faith. He shall live. What is the basis of this faith? Why is the just going to live? We say by his faith. This faith is based on what? This faith, of course, faith, trust. What are you trusting on? What do you trust on to be able to live? To be able to survive. Faith is lean. What do you lean on? That you might be sustained. That you might be energized in life. What do you lean on? Faith is standing. What do you stand on? That you can be carried away. Can be carried on in life. What do you stand on? I'm going to tell you what the just leans on. I'm going to tell you what the just throws on. What the just believes in, what the just relies on, what the just stands on. Number one, the just has his faith in God. He leans on God. He stands on God. He believes in God. He relies in God. He trusts in God. And that will be the just to survive in every adversity of life. The Bible tells us in the book of Acts of Apostles, chapter 27, verse 23 to 25. Here, <clears throat> the scripture says, For there stood by me <clears throat> this night, the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve. Paul was a just man. He belongs to God. 
He serves God. That makes him a just man. That makes Paul to live in whatever opposition of life. In whatever circumstance of life, Paul must live because he's a just man. He said, they came, they stood by me this night. The angel of God, whose I am, and whom I saw, said, fear not, Paul. Thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of, good co- be of good cheer, be comforted, be assured, for I believe God, that it shall be even as it was told me. That's it. That's it. And I believe God with unshakable faith that what God told me shall come to pass because I believe God. God said it. It was God that said it. The reason why I am going forward is because God told me to go forward. The reason why I do what I do is because God told me to do it. And I am doing it with that assurance because I know God. I serve God and He shall not fail me. I know this God. The just believes in the love of God. For God so loved the just man. For God so loved the just man. The just man is a child of God. The just woman is a child of God. And with an everlasting love I have loved you. With loving kindness I have drawn you. And because of the love of the father for the just man. Just child. The father can never forsake him. The father can never abandon him. The Father can never trust him away. The Father can never leave him in the wilderness of life. The Father can never leave him in the ocean. The Father can never leave him in darkness. Because he knows his Father loves him. Because he knows his Father cares for him. Because he knows the love of God. The just man knows that the compassion of God is upon him. The care of God is upon him. And whatever situation of life, God will arise in love, in compassion and deliver him. That's why he believes. That is his confidence. That's why he regains energy. That's why in darkness he believes he shall see the light. That's why he fears not the lion because of the love of the Father. The just man knows of the omnipresence of his God. That God is with him here. God is with him in darkness. Darkness shall be light over me. The just man knows that in this situation I am, God is here. God is everywhere. And if no man is here, hallelujah, if enemies run, 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 run around me and are coming to attack, the just man knows that he is with God where he is. And God, in God here, the great God of love, he will deliver him. That's why David said, I'm not afraid of ten thousands of my enemies. Run about. My God is with me. The just man knows of the only science of God. I said faith in God. He knows that where, from the headquarters of this problem, our God is aware. From the origin, the source of this thing, where it was coming up, where it was planted, God is aware, and the very, very steps of these things are numbered. And our God is, he knows everything. Since he knows, he has also planned remedy. That's why the just man lives. With that, that is the, the very reason of his confidence. My God knows. My God is aware. And again, the just man believes in the omnipotence of God. Is there anything that God cannot do? Is there any mountain that God cannot move? Is there any sickness that God cannot heal? Is there any problem that God cannot solve? For I am the Lord. Is there anything too difficult for me? Because they have confidence in God. The God that can do all things. That is why he believes in 
He believes that God will help him. He knows the power of God. The greatness of God. Once has God spoken, twice have I heard that power belongs unto God. They just believe in the willingness of God. He knows that God is willing to save. God is willing to deliver. A leper came to Jesus and said, Lord, if thou canst, thou mayest, thou mayest make me clean. Jesus said, if thou wilt, thou wilt, thou mayest make me clean. Jesus said, I will. I will. Be thou clean. They just know that his God is willing. That's why he believes him. He, saw, he believes God because of the willingness of God. If thou bring evil, know how to give good things to your children. How much more shall your father which is in heaven? Again, the just believe in the faithfulness of God. That's his confidence. God is unchanging. God is good forever. And God will be good to him now. That's why he's assured. God will not change. He will not change his world. He believes in the grace of God. Even at times of weaknesses, our, the grace of God overshadows. That's why the just is confident. The goodness of God. The mercy of God. That's the basis of his faith. That's why he's assured. He has wrote. He said that he calls on the God of mercy. He believes in the God of mercy and is confident that God will arise in mercy over his life. The just shall live. He believes that God will surely come to serve him. That's number one. Confidence of the just is God himself, a lover, powerful, ever there, always willing. Again, what is the basis? What is the reason why the just believes that he will be saved? The basis of his faith is Christ and his sacrifice. The just believes in Christ and his sacrifice. He believes that because of Christ and his sacrifice on the cross, he will receive the blessing directed, desired from God. That the blessing he desired, he will have it. Why? Christ has purchased them. The Bible says in the book of Romans, Chapter 8, verse 32. Here the scripture says clearly that if he that spared not his own son but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? He spared not his own son. Yes, Jesus Christ has provided salvation. He has provided deliverance. It is now a common pool. Everyone can benefit from it. It has been provided for everyone. That provision is for all the students. And the just is a student in the school. He has right to that thing. Because it is for all students. It has been provided. The water that is in the school compound is for every student. Any student can go and fetch it. It was provided for the students. The just knows that all that Christ has done, He has done it for them. And by the sacrifice of Christ, He too can benefit. Yes. His faith is based on the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus has purchased redemption for Him. The blood of Jesus has purchased victory for him. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. The blood of Jesus Christ has, has provided for protection for him. He believed on that blood that he has his protection. The just believes on the stripes of Jesus. The Bible says, by the stripes of Jesus we were healed. He believes on the name of Jesus Christ. It's for him. It's provided for him. That is the source of his confidence. That is the source of his assurance. That is the reason why he is bold in life. He believes on that name of Jesus. That it will work for him. When he calls that name, God will answer. 
we need praise by that name God will answer that is his prayer I and mean, that is his faith the sacrifice of Christ he claims the victory and provisions of the cross of Christ Christ has purchased it for him he got it for him therefore he stands there and say I belong to this family all that is purchased here is provided here is for us I am one of them I am a here in the family I am a here I have right to the property of the family it has been it is ours to enjoy that's why the just lives the just shall live by faith what am I saying I am saying believe the sacrifices of Christ look to the sacrifices of Christ he has provided a common good blessing for us everybody goes there to enjoy go there to yourself stand on it you have right to it you have right to the blessings of the blood of Christ you have right to the blessing of the name of Jesus you have right to the blessings of the stripes of Jesus you have right to all the victories of the cross they are yours and by the basis of Christ's sacrifice claim your right claim your victory over the devil over circumstances of life over opposition claim your right then you shall survive then you shall overcome the just shall live by faith what is the basis of his faith? The word of God. The just believes that the word of God cannot fail. The word of God cannot fail. In the book of Isaiah chapter 55, verse 10 and 11, the Bible says, Isaiah 55, verse 10. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. But it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I send it. It shall prosper. When I release my word, my word shall prosper. When I release my word, my word shall bring, shall cause the shall cause the earth to bring forth fruit. My word shall produce, shall cause the circumstance to produce, shall direct the circumstance according to my word, my will. My word is active and operative. If I speak my word to your body, the word of healing, it will work. My word will produce healing. The word of God is alive. When I send my word into a body with a specific instruction, it goes to perform it. When I send my word into the atmosphere with a specific instruction, it goes to perform that instruction. When I send my word into a nation with a specific instruction, it goes to perform what I send it for. When I send my word into the sea with a specific instruction, it goes there to perform what I sent it there for. Where am I send my word to any circumstance with a specific instruction it goes to perform it that's my world and the just has learned that secret the just has known that that's why he bases his assurance on the world has God spoken then then that settles it has God whispered to you that settles it that's the matter the matter has ended there the just shall live by faith he moves on because God has said it. God has spoken. God has assured. God has revealed. He spoke. He whispered, he whispered to me. He directed me to see it. I saw it. What he said. I saw it written down. I became assured. 
Nay, that's why I leave. Hallelujah. Let Joshua leave. By faith, the word of God. The Bible tells us, look to the word of God and read. None of this shall fail. Have you read the word? Have you seen a, a promise in scripture for you? Have you seen a Bible testimony for yourself? Have you seen from the word of God? You have discovered a message for you, a promise for you. Believe that promise absolutely and it shall work for you. Absolutely. Lean upon that promise. Stand upon that promise. Move by that promise. Rely upon that promise. It shall work. They just shall live by faith. They just shall live by faith. The Bible says, Until heaven and earth shall pass, my world shall not pass away. My world, never, it shall not pass away. Therefore, if God has spoken to you, if God has given you a word, if God has opened your eyes, He gave you His word, Believe that word, it shall work. It shall come to pass. It can never fail. The just shall survive. The just shall triumph. But say, total trust in God. The God bases his faith on the promises of God in scripture. The promises of God. What the Lord has said. Look at it in the book of Romans. Chapter, chapter 4, verse 17 to 22. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations, before him whom he believed, even God, who quickened the dead, and called those things which be not as though they were, who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead. When he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deathness of Sarah's womb, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. And therefore, it was imputed to him for righteousness. Promise the word of God. Huh. You don't know the word, you don't know the nature of God you serve? This is the God that told Gideon that the 32,000 people are coming. That our friends should go back home. The 10,000 remaining were too many. They should take them to the river and would test them. And came out with 300 people that were ready to go and face hundreds of thousands of the Midianites enemies. Hey, the, the, the enemy, that's the Midianites enemies and the Amalekites. God can look at a very contrary situation of your life and just throw a promise for you. A promise that if you are not bold, you cannot believe it. A promise that if you are not really prepared in your heart, you cannot believe it. A promise that if you are not standing on your crown and convinced on the God you serve and convinced of His power and His miraculous work, you may not believe that promise. He can give you a wonderful promise in a completely dry situation. That's God. Can you understand Elisha? Saying unto the children of Israel, By this time tomorrow, a major of valley shall be so for his sickle. I mean, for shall be so, so for his sickle. For, for, I mean, for two, and rather, two major for his sickle. And a major fine flower for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. It was beyond understanding. To Abraham here, a man hundred years old, the Lord came to say, By this time next year, Sarah, your wife, shall give birth to a child. And to Sarah, as the whose body was dead, and God gave such a promise. It took Abraham a tightening of his bow to believe. It took Abraham a tracing up of himself to believe. Because it was too much. Yet Abraham believed against hope. It was not possible. Natural reasoning could, could not avail. But he believed. Contrary to reasoning. 
I'm telling you, you must believe God in that way. If you want to live in difficult times, if you want difficult situations to change, difficult circumstances to change, believe God in a hard way, in a difficult way, then you will live. Then you will see the miracle of God. For with God, everybody say it. All things are possible. Therefore, why can't we believe Him? If the Lord tells us that He's going to change it, turn this place into rivers of water, can't we believe Him? He will we believe Him. He will believe God. Be just. Just. Children of God, these are difficult times. Sicknesses that we don't know their names are coming up. Hard circumstances are coming up. Demons are multiplying themselves. It will take confidence in God, believing the promises of God, hanging to God to live, to survive, to overcome, to triumph. It just shall move by faith. That's the word of God. The child believes the testimonies of scripture and assures himself that as it happened to those who trusted in God, so it shall happen to him. The testimonies, what things were written of four times, were written for our learning, that we, through the comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. What Goliath, what David did to Goliath is assuring you that you can do same to the devil. What the Lord did to the women of all, to the men of all that believe Him, were written there to assure you He can do it for you. He can do it for you. Therefore, those testimonies of Scripture are written for our learning. They are written for our faith. They are written for our admonition. They are written for our progress. That as we believe God, so shall we triumph. And now, through our life, fresh testimonies shall be written for generations to come. Hallelujah. The just shall live by faith. Yes, he, the just believes in the prophetic word or the Christian word given to him by God that it shall come to pass because God is not a man that he shall lie or a son of man that he shall repent. God is not a man that he shall lie. Now the son of man that he shall repent. It was on, on Wednesday this week that while I was going to the workers' meeting, I saw, so I saw them dragging a mad woman towards my house. I looked at them. I saw the one was a location pastor. I called him. Ah, what's that? He started explaining, and it was near the market, so everybody was staring at us. I saw we enter the vehicle. We drove them to church. There we prayed for the woman, prayed well, and the woman should relieve. The woman that never ate food, now ate food and drank water. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, the people themselves had never eaten anything since morning because of the trouble of the woman. The woman had troubled them since last week Friday. Running into the bush, doing this and doing that. Then, with a sense that relief had come, she wanted to sleep, they let her into the church to sleep. She went in and slept. We finished the prayer meeting, everybody left. And uh, the particular people that brought her went also to eat their food. It was around uh, maybe 8, 8, 8, 20, 8, 30 p.m., 8 o'clock, whatever. When I, when I came back home, I saw the two people came with machine. What happened? They said the woman had escaped. That night, this woman woke up and never saw anybody and ran out and disappeared completely that she could not be seen. Wonderful. When I was told this, we went back to church. They went to all the places around the church, entered the bush, checked everywhere. They could not find that woman. What was this? What, was, what is this thing? What is, what is this thing? Why would the people of the land say they who don't want to believe the truth, who have been, who have been believing a lie, what will they now say? Wonderful. This woman could not be seen. 
it took, I tell you, you have to be bold in life to believe God. Be bold. Some circumstances are heavily great. Trying circumstances. We have to believe God. We hoped against hope. Had this woman gone over there to Pangshin side, gone to Yerwa there, gone to Inu Bush, climbed the mountain, gone to Inu, whichever place. I asked them to go all the way to Zanko that night to trace whether they could find her on the way. They reached there and they did not saw her. Early in the morning, I woke up. I prayed. Then I went to scripture. I said, God, speak to me. The Lord said, go to the story of the prodigal son. I said, what do I learn there? I opened it, uh, a person, uh, the man has two sons, the younger of them said, Father, give me what belongs to me, and uh, he divided to them his living, and he took his journey and went to a far country. I said, no wonder this woman has gone far. This woman must have gone far. Then, he came down, as I read down, he said, uh, rejoice, this my child, rejoice with me, for this my child was dead, was lost, but now is found. Hallelujah. Amen. I know the quickening scripture has been given. The prophetic scripture has been given. And wherever that woman was, she was going to come back. She was going to be found. We went round, moved round, looking for, we sent some people out, and they went and found her about five kilometers from this place. She came there in the night and wanted to pass. Something drew her back. So she rested in that place. And that's how they found her. The word of God. If God has given you his word until heaven and earth passes, that word shall not fail. If God has quickened the scripture, given you a prophetic word, a quickened scripture, believe it, you will live. Believe it, you will survive. Hold to it, pray by it, it shall come to pass, even as it has been told you. Hallelujah. That scripture, the God shall live. Because he believes in the witness of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit has witnessed to him and he believes what the Spirit says. He's assured that the Holy Ghost spoke it. Very, very assured. For he, my sheep hear my voice and they know me. He's assured. And he lives. Faith, therefore, is the assurance of heart developed by the just man because of the certainty that God will answer him. Assured. It is the heart conviction that what he desires is his by Christ's sacrifice. Faith knows the word of God can yet cannot fail. Faith starts praising and thanking God for its being, for its having been done already. It is assured. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. He's convinced that it shall be done. I'm saying, hold to your convictions. Hold to the assurances God has given to you. Hold to the assurances concerning the circumstances, the trying circumstances, the storms of life, against your life, against your family, against your business, against your education, against your progress. Hold to what God has assured you, and you shall break through in life. That's scripture. The just shall need. I'm going to tell you about examples of just men that lived by faith. By total trust in God. Complete leaning on God. The just shall live by faith. The word to live here covers all the blessings and the fullness of life. It means the following. The just shall live righteously, peacefully. And joyfully by faith. By faith. You can live righteous life, a peaceful life, a joyful life. By total trust in the living God. Not on money, not on people, not on things, not on food, not on clothing, not on business, not on anything, but on the living God. You can live a righteous life. You can live a peaceful life. You can live a joyful life. Child of God, the just shall live by faith. Enoch walked with God to the end of his life. To the end of his life. It was daily trusting God. 
that laid on and throughout all the years of his life. Paul the Apostle said that the righteous life is possible by faith. You can live a righteous life if you look to the living God. If you set up your eyes upon God, if you set your mind upon the cross of Christ, if you set your thoughts upon Jesus, if you need your mind to stay on Jesus, you can live a righteous life. There's no sin that is powerful. Too powerful to, go, to be overcome, to be broken, if you give an eye to that Jesus. An eye that Peter gave to Jesus Christ restored him from backsliding. I'm telling you, faith in God will restore you. The just shall live. The just shall survive. The just shall overcome. The just shall break through by faith. By total trust in God. All these problems of, of immorality, of lust, of masturbation, of greed, covetousness, of pride, and everything, they shall wane away and be dissolved in the life of a just man. Why? He believes God. What's the reason why you, you are going to go to heaven? It's because you believe God. It's because you believe the sacrifices of Christ. It's because you believe the blood. You believe the name of God. You believe the work of God. And that's why you are going to go to heaven. Hallelujah. The just shall live by faith. Paul said, I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life that I live, now I live it by the faith of the Son of God. I totally surrender to Him. I totally trust in Him. I totally yield to Him by the faith of the Son of God that loves me and gave Himself for me. The just shall live by faith. This means in any generation, in any environment, in any circumstance, men can be just and live righteously, peacefully, joyfully, through faith in God. There is no organization so corrupt, not as corrupt as the, as the kingdom of Babylon, and Daniel lived righteously. There is no circumstance so trying. There is no temptation pegging you, but the such as is common to man. And if you look to God, believe God, hold on God, you will overcome. That scripture, power will come. The power of God will be released. Look up and power will descend upon you. Mercy will look up, righteousness will descend from heaven. Let the just man look up to the sky and the fire of God will back him up. The righteousness of God will come. The grace of God will come. And you will live. The just shall be delivered from police need by faith. Hallelujah. Amen. If I have time to give you testimony of what God can do, you can be delivered from any situation as you trust the living God. Because God knows all. God is all. God is for you. The just shall live by faith. The just shall be saved from any situation by faith. Daniel was saved from the mouth of the lions. Look at the book of Daniel chapter 6. I read Daniel chapter 6 verse 16. The Bible says here, Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy God, I told you faith is in God, in the love of God, in the mercy of God, in the grace of God, in the kindness of God, in the presence of God, in the authority of God. Thy God, whom thou servest continually, he shall deliver thee. That is even a hidden king saying to a just man, assuring a just man, say, that God to serve will deliver you. Then, we read verse 19. The king returned to see how the situation was with that just man that was accused. Look at verse 19. The king came and saw Daniel was still alive. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste unto the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, 
is thy God, whom thou servest continually, just man, able to deliver thee from the lions. Elijah 
and the family of the widow of Zarephath were sustained by was sustained by the little flour and oil of the widow throughout the famine famine period. How did it happen? Elijah said to that woman, "Thus saith the Lord, that oil shall not finish, that flour shall not finish until the time that God sends abundance upon the earth." The woman believed God. You might be a student having nobody to sponsor you. But you have received assurance from the Lord as a just child that God says, move on. You will finish your school. That word will make you finish your school. That's scripture. That's the word. Take the word and stand there. Oh, blessed God, the people, the people that know the revelation of the world, I am lifting you up to walk in a higher room. I am lifting you up to a higher ground that you can claim the blessings of God and distribute to other people. Peter and the other the apostles were in the boat. Jesus was walking on the water. And Peter knew the power of the world. Peter knows what the world can do. That if the world is released, the right world that is released, is released carries with it complete package to accomplish the will of God. To make sure what it is, that world is released for its accomplished. Peter looked at Jesus and said, Lord, if you are the one, invite me to come. Hallelujah. Amen. Peter knew he could not just jump into the river except a rock is broken. And Jesus said, what did Jesus say? That simple word, that simple word, that sentence of one word, carried all the power of the universe. That sentence of one word, carried the power of the God, the God head. That sentence of the universe, carried all the miracles of life. That sentence of the universe was going to turn the water into another thing. Peter jumped into it and walked. He just shall do miracles by faith. You shall move your mountain by faith. Put that trust in God's word. And that mountain, you will see it move. They just shall live by faith. Put that trust in the word of God. The scripture. Joshua said to the son to stand still. And he stood still. The just shall prosper by faith. The Bible says, Without faith, it is impossible to please Him. He that, be, he that comes to God must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder. The one that prospers people that come unto Him. The one that prospers people, prospers people that believe in Him. He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. All you need to do to prosper in your life is seek the Lord. Seek the Lord, you will prosper. Seek the Lord, you will make progress. Jabez had nothing but to seek the Lord. Jabez only prayed. Jabez, Jabez sought the face of God and became a prosperous man, an honorable man. The just shall live by faith. For all, all power is, all power belongs to Jesus Christ. The power of prosperity is in the hand of the living God. Seek Him, He will give you, you will prosper. The just shall be healed, shall be kept healthy and made fruitful by faith. Total trust in God is enough to lose you from every sickness. Believe the word of God and stand there. As you go through the word, as God spoken any word to you, take it. Has God ministered anything for your heart? Take it. Has the Holy Ghost revealed something to you? Have you received a witness of the Spirit concerning the headache, concerning the stomach ache, the problem in your blood, the problem in your boob, the problem in your head? Believe God. Pause away for us. Be of good cheer for I believe God. It shall be even as it has been told me. Believe God. You will live. You will make progress. That sickness will go. One day, you will not see it again. Amen. In some ways, solution will come. Amen. I say, in some ways, solution will come. Amen. When Elisha said, by this time tomorrow, uh, a, a, a body of fine flour, a meat of fine flour, shall be sold for a, for two, um, for, for a shekel, and two meters of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. The people did not know how, but God arranged four lepers to work it out. 
As to how it will be done. Don't pour down her, but be assured it shall be done. The Bible says, Blessed is she that believes, for there shall be a performance for her from the Lord. That's scripture. The just shall be healed by believing God's word. King Hezekiah was healed of a sickness which was supposed to die. Abraham and Sarah's bodies got quickened, and Sarah was healed of her barrenness and gave back to a child, but failed. Moses attained to the age of 120 and was still healthy. His eyes were not dim. By putting trust in God. Complete reliance on the living God. I challenge you to believe God. I challenge you to believe God. I invite you to believe God. I say believe the living God. And you will see your situation will change. You will see light will come to your darkness. God will cause his light to shine in your life. The God shall possess spiritual gifts and intelligence and success by faith. The four Hebrew children, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, were specially blessed with knowledge, intelligence, and wisdom by faith in God. The girls shall be promoted to honor by faith. This was clearly seen in the life of Joseph, who, from prison, was promoted to a prime minister in Egypt. It was seen in the life of Mordecai, that was promoted to the mix to, 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 to the deputy of the king of Persia, the king of Persia. Why? By God. How did it happen? That a prisoner became a, the president? Or rather, let's put it this way, the vice president of the, of the country, from prison to presidency. It was a man that held to his dreams. It was a man that kept to his righteousness. It was a man that looked to the living God. It was a man that looked and feared God, called on God, believed in God, that what God revealed to him will one day come to pass, and it was so. Can you see how God worked out the promotion of Mordecai? What cannot God do for your life? If you can believe God, what cannot God give you? He can promote you. He can make a seat for you. And rest you up. He rested up the poor from the dunghill. Or the poor from the dust. And take it a beggar from the dunghill. And make them to sit upon horses. And to be among the princes of the land. The just shall be promoted by faith. The just shall make progress in life and ministry by faith. Apostle Paul demonstrated this clearly. He demonstrated it. His eyes were on Jesus. He was moving according to the outward calling. He saw, he saw that we were beckoning him. Jesus was beckoning Paul to a higher ground. To a higher ground. To a higher ground. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Because my master is in the up hill. He's inviting me to rise. He's inviting me to come. As I climb one step, he tells me that I could come another. He gives me promise for a third step, for a fourth step, and I go by those promises. And that is how I am climbing up the upper way. I am going up to the higher ground. I am going to the table land where I will be above the clouds. By faith. Don't put reliance on the living God. The just shall live by faith. What am I saying? Believe God, you will live. Believe God, you will live. Believe God, you will make advancement. You will be promoted. You will be lifted up. You will be highly blessed and blessed by God. Life will be well as you believe the living God. The just shall live by faith. Even if pains are there in your body, faith in God will sustain you. That's scripture. The just shall overcome and prevail against the enemies and be protected by faith. The victory of David over Goliath and his protection from the wickedness of King Saul is a clear example. David said to Goliath, You come against me with a spear, with a shield, with a sword, but I come against you in the name of the Lord of hosts. This day, God will cut off, will take you, will cut off your head from you. 
Yeah, because of the fight the army of the living God. He said unto Saul, the God that protected me and delivered me from the lion and from the bear, he will, from the bear, he will protect me from this uncircumcised Philistine. By faith you can overcome. Put that trust in God. Though we walk in the flesh and you see us weak, you see us see we're too mean, too gentle, but we do not war after the flesh. In warfare we are mighty warriors. We are burning with fire. We win in the warfare because we trust the living God. The instruments of our warfare are mighty to God. They pull down strongholds. The God shall enter into eternity by faith. Lazarus, among catalogs of just men and women, have entered into heaven by total trust in the living God. I invite you to trust in God. I invite you to believe God so that you will enter heaven. You will be there. Hold to the benefit of Christ. Hold to the benefit of Christ. Even when you are dying, you are dying, believe. Believe Jesus. Whatever sin you have committed, hold to Him and you will see the burden of sin shall roll away. Faith on the Calvary shall roll away the burden of sin from your life. A new life, a good breeze from heaven will blow around you and refresh you. A voice shall whisper to you saying, Come home my son, come home my daughter, I have made all things ready for you. They just shall live by faith. But I trust in God, holding to the word of God, looking to Him, leaning on Him, lying on Him, standing upon Him. The just shall live. You shall live. I want to run up. I want to tell you the importance of trusting God. I want to tell you you need to trust God in your life. I want to exhort you to stay for faith in God in whatever situation. I told you the just shall live by faith. We have seen the blessings of faith upon just men and women. The blessings received by these men and women came to them at various times, at a various time intervals from the moment of faith. The moment of faith. The moment of faith. The blessing came in the time of faith. When you believe God today, you have done an investment. When you believe God today, you have done an investment and it will mature in the time according to His time. Faith is a seed. Faith of various things are seeds. And when you sow seeds, they don't spring up at the same time. Some spring up now, but some later. Some take seriously many days. Some will run into many weeks. Some may run into some quite months. That tells you know, that there is time to say. They can you learn wisdom that you don't give up on the way. There's time for faith. There's time for performance. There's time for everything. That's what the Bible says. The vision is yet for an appointed time. Don't no, carry a word for it. At the end you shall speak in its own time. At the end you will see that the word of God cannot be broken. For the scripture cannot be broken. The word given to you will come to pass. Yes. That's why the Bible says we should believe God and not be faithless. <laughs> believe God and not be faithless. Jesus said to Thomas, Thomas, is it because you have seen me before you believe? Is it because of seeing me that you believe? Thomas said, my, my Lord and my God. Jesus said, Blessed are they who have not seen but do believe. Blessed are those that walk with me by faith. You have not seen Jesus but you believe him. You are a man of blessing. You are a woman of blessing. Because it shall be well with you in life. It shall be well. Believe. Even if you are not seen, believe that it shall be. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 12, Rather, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12. Here, the scripture says, That ye be not slothful, 
but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Chapter 10 of Hebrews, verse 35 and 36. The Bible says, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35, Cast not away therefore your confidence, whose heart great recompense of the world, for ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. Here the Bible speaks of faith and patience. Faith and patience. Faith and patience. You believe God, it has not yet moved, it has not, not yet been removed, wait for him. Wait. Faith moves to patience. Wait. God will do it, but in his, in his own time. Do you remember that the Philistines were gathered against Saul, but someone was yet to come and sacrifice? And someone, according to Saul, delayed in coming? And Saul went into the, the house of God to sacrifice what he could have not done? And it became a curse for his life. That is how children of God, instead of trusting God, they leave God and go after demons to look for help because they say God has delayed. They say God has delayed. Yet, Samuel came and the Philistines have not come. Don't you know that the same God that will perform your case is the same God that will stand on your enemy and call them to stand there until he has performed. God is the God between you and your enemy. If he has not come, he is doing something there that you should not be overcome for now until he came, until he comes. Until he comes. That's why the Bible says something. It says, be anxious for nothing. But in everything, through prayer, through supplication, let your request be made known unto God. And when God has not yet performed your request, what God will do is that he will send the peace of God that passes all understanding to keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. He will be perfectly peaceful, although it has not yet been done. That's the way. That's where patience is required. Faith and patience. Know it. That they have been as lawful, but followers of them who through faith and patience, however long it takes, wait for it. That's the cost of believing God. That's the cost of righteousness. Faith, patience. Yes. Don't lose your confidence in God. But be patient and keep on believing God. And believing His promises in Christ until the answer comes. The Bible says we should keep on confessing our faith in God and His promises and continue to speak the language of faith over our situation. The answer will surely come. For God is faithful. Keep on confessing. What is the reason why you say so? It's because God says so. God has assured you that's why we speak. For we have the spirit of faith and therefore we speak. We have belief and therefore we speak. Speak. You will not be ashamed. Speak. The language of faith. God will back you up because he, he assured you. He gave you the word. You're not speaking your own word. He's teaching you to be like him. That call it that in which be not as though it were. That's scripture. You are exalted to walk by faith and not by sight. For we walk by faith and not by sight. If you see the thing now, see it, the thing is not changing. When Jesus crossed that fig tree, the Bible didn't say the leaves dried up immediately. No, there was no sign. The wind was still blowing the leaves and they were still dancing on top of that tree. And everything was normal. Every green color was there. The tree was still healthy, looking healthy. Everything was fine upon that tree. If you look at the tree, you'll be angry. That's what the Bible says we live by faith. But when they came the second day, that tree, <laughs> it had been dead, completely dried up from the root. Why are you praying with eyes? That is why you are doubting God. Pray with the heart. The enemy may be laughing. Forget the laughter which is a physical thing. There is something happening in the spiritual. Your God is at work. Great things are being done over there. Great things have been done. 
Therefore, live by faith, pray by faith, walk by faith, believe God. For we walk by faith and not by sight. To live by faith now and rely completely upon God and His wonderful love and promises in Christ. That's what God expects of you. Now, the just shall live by faith. Now. Now. Believe God now. Let it now. Start now. All right, for now, if you will live, you will live by faith. Survive. Now, you can say, can make you live. Say, can make you live now. In the situations of the now, you can live by faith. But if you rely on God. The Bible says, wait patiently on the Lord for the appointed time of His promise. Wait, I say on the Lord, for the appointed time, for the vision is here for an appointed time. At the end it shall speak. Though it parry, wait for it. For it shall surely come and it shall not parry. Wait, wait, I say on the Lord and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. I have fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. I had fainted and gave it up. My strength would have fainted, went away, except I believed that no, there's still hope for me. I said, believe that there's still hope for your life. Believe God. Give thanks and praises to Him because of His faithfulness and the certainty of the answer. The answer will surely come. It will surely come. It's going to come on from your right hand side. It's going to come from the left hand side. It's going to descend from above. It's going to follow you at the back. It's going to come from the front. The answer will come. The answer will come. The answer will come. Let's not be children of faith. They just shall live by faith. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God. What I have spoken today is going to transform your life. What I have spoken today is going to bless your life. What I have spoken today will move your mountain. What I have spoken today will bind the devil in your life. What I have spoken today will heal your sicknesses and diseases. What I have spoken today will lose you from bondage. What I have spoken today will shower blessings upon you. Believe God. Believe God. It shall be well with you. It shall be well with you. It shall be well with you. They just shall live by faith. As you hold to God, you will live. You will leave. You will overcome. You will let them come and see you tomorrow. They shall see you as you are riding upon the horse of victory. You are riding upon the horse of victory. You will be moving in the victory of the Lord. Because you believe God today. The word of God shall not fail. It shall not fail you. Blessed is she that believed. For there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. can be healed by faith. You believe you can be healed by faith. The power of God will come to make you healed. The power of God is coming to make you live. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. That's the word of God. You believe on the strength of Christ. I pronounce healing to your life. I pronounce healing to your life. I say you are healed. I say you are healed. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, we come before you with joy, a joyful assurance.